Guitar Stuff with John. Welcome to another Guitar Stuff with John. I don't know American Sign Language. I wish I did. Anyhow, uh, it's been a long while. Well, not that long. I mean, <coughs> basically back at the, uh, the beginning of the channel, 18, 19 months ago, uh, I did a blind taste test with two guitars and the response to that was absolutely incredible and so I did another one the last guitar stuff with John was a guitar I showed you an instrument that could be anything really but I covered the headstock with a sock so nobody could see who built the guitar and a lot of you got it right uh, many of you got it wrong but there's no wrong or right. And see, that's the point. The whole reason I did this was to make sure to, to pound home the, my personal... This thing is ringing. I'm talking and it's ringing at me. Uh, the, my personal mandate for guitar players is to make sure that, that no one uh, feels like they have to spend money a lot of money on a name guitar you can and and i have and everybody i know has but sometimes you can buy an instrument that absolutely just blows your face off and you don't have to spend a ton of money so many of you got this correct this guitar that looks for all intents and purposes just like a D45 Martin is actually built by Sigma. There she is. Sigma with the M, you know, endorsed by Martin. Sigma is an amazing company. Now, I gotta t I'm going to tell this story be because it's part legend and part truth. I'm not sure how much of... of where the line is in in the legend but the story kind of goes that in 1969 um or 68 69 somewhere's in there a, a group of japanese businessmen decided they wanted to start a production company and to sell things to the west and they were like okay so what do we build and somebody said well why don't we build guitars because it was a huge folk boom, and the Japanese are very artistic, and they thought, yes, this will put our artisans to work. This is this is something that we can really get into. So, what do what kind of guitars do we build? Well, what's the most popular guitar in the world? And the Japanese, all of the Asian peoples, they they thrive on imitation. They think imitation and believe that imitation is the is the highest form of flattery, which it is. And so they decided, well, if we're going to build guitars, we need to build guitars like Martin. So the, here's the legend part. Nobody, Nobody's really ever confirmed this to me, but I've heard this story from many, many people inside the business. This group of men from Japan flew to America, went to Nazareth, and went on a tour as tourists. They walked in there with their, you know, their tourist garb and their cameras, and they there's a group of Japanese tourists touring the Martin factory, right? Well, they took pictures of everything. <laughs> everything. They even managed to see the plans for the D-28 and how it was built. They took pictures of everything, right? And so they then went back to Japan and started building guitars, but they actually were building Martin guitars under the name Sigma. This took a little bit of time to get over to the West. Martin noticed it was happening. They're like, whoa, wait a second, you can't do this, because at that time in 69, 1970, when the company actually started on the market, Martin had invented the dreadnought. It was almost a copywritten design. Nobody had ever really, you know, successfully exactly copied it without being doing something illegal, right? So they contacted, Martin contacted Sigma and said, 
you've got to stop, cease and desist. You can't build these guitars anymore. We don't know how you're doing this, but you can't do it. And Japan, the Japanese said, well, how are you going to stop us, basically? We're in Japan. You're there. Like, what are you, what are you going to do? We're not, we're not hurting you. We're not saying they're Martins. Uh, and so instead of launching a big lawsuit, and I have to give it to Martin for this, right? Martin instead went back to them and said, okay, fine. You build the guitars, but let us uh, sponsor it. Let us give you permission. And you can call the guitars Sigma by Martin or something or whatever however we can however we can work it out so that they know these are Martin copies and that's what ended up happening so Sigma started a long relationship with Martin from 1970 to about 1983 I think is when they quit so let's flash ahead to about 2011 or 12 a company in Germany called AMI decided to they wanted to start producing guitars and they looked around and found that the Sigma company had just they when they quit building guitars they just walked away from it they didn't bother taking up the you know the 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 copyright of the name they didn't do anything they just said okay bleh, they let it go so it was floating in the ether and so AMI went in and said well we're going to buy that let's resurrect that company because there's potential now to build even better Sigmas which there is obviously and so ami began moved the the took the plans for the guitars moved them into this high-end shops in china and started building sigmas again and as soon as i saw that i remember discovering that they were building them and again it's my love of martins right i i love martins i just can't afford them and as i've said a million times i don't really trust them that much they're 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 just there's too many of them being built. It takes too long to find the magic one. So I thought, geez, I'm going to contact AMI. And I wrote to AMI, and they came back to me immediately and said, yes, we, we'd very much like you to play our guitars. And so I was in on the ground floor through a, distri a distribution company here in Canada called Coast Music, and a woman named Sharon Green, who's the, the uh, regional rep for us here on the east coast of Canada. And I, I, st I, I owned almost every guitar they built at one point and they were incredible incredible guitars all under a thousand dollars some of the higher end ones were all solid just in just incredible here's the bottom line first of all i want to make some actual some actually some corrections that i was unaware of because early on in the sigma return the the there was some different things being used other than what this, this guitar is built out of Guitar is obvious, obviously all solid, and but the back and the sides of it are actually made out of telia, which is a is a you know for all intents and purposes again is a, a type of rosewood, right? It's probably not the same species, but it looks almost identical. And a, 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 kind of an interesting thing about the, this wood is that it was originally used a lot of times for artisans to make. Uh, marionettes out of dolls like ornate furniture like this wood has been used for this purpose for thousands of years to build things right uh like intricate things so it's 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 kind of it's kind of uh fitting that they're now using it in guitars the other thing that i didn't know that really shocked me is that this fret this fretboard is actually made out of micarta i had no idea about that and I have crapped on my Carta fretboards before, and so I have to take all that back. This, you can't, I can't tell in the least that this is not a piece of ebony. I really can't. It's, and it feels like wood. Like, it feels identical to wood. The action it is wooden it's just wood uh, it, but it's not it's my carta the other thing too i want to mention quickly is that the guitar is is a poly finish uh but it's a very thin poly finish it is not one of those ones that they're putting on with a roller um it even has the volute as the martin does like it's just 
it's very difficult to if you can't see the headstock of this guitar from six feet away to tell that it is not a, a Martin D45. It looks identical to a D45. I've owned one before, as I've told, I'm sure I'm sure you've heard on this channel. I bought a, a new one 15 years ago and kept it four months because the bridge came off and it was a cannon, that guitar. But once the bridge was off and repaired, the guitar never sounded the same. So I sold it at a tremendous financial loss. I paid $13,000 for it and I sold it for six because people didn't want it. The bridge had been off and I had to disclose that. So they're like, eh, eh, eh. So I lost half, more than half my money. Anyhow, this guitar is just lovely. uncoated light strings. I believe these are actually Martin strings I put on it just for a laugh. Now, I'm going to tell you something. You've seen this guitar, you've heard it, you know what it is now, and I'm going to tell you something. And here's here's the takeaway I want everybody to 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 have. If you put this guitar beside a Martin D45, and always remember, I'm in Canada, so everything is much more... Our cost of living is higher here, So, but it's all relative. Uh, in the United States, this guitar costs about $9,000, and here in Canada, it costs about thirteen, which is... But everything is cheaper in the States, everything, not just guitars. Their money's worth more. Ours is worth less. So it's all relative. We pay more for gas. We pay more for everything, but we make actually make more money. Our, our, our minimum wages are higher, everything, all that stuff. So it's all relative. It doesn't matter what the number is. The number in Canadian is a bit more frightening. But let's just say for sake of argument, let's talk about U.S. dollars. So this guitar is somewhere around, let's say, ten grand after taxes and shipping and whatever you, however you get your hands on it. The D45, rather, I mean. The, the real Martin D45 is ten grand. So this guitar is ten percent of that. It's $1,000 U.S. You put these two guitars in stands side by side, and if you cover up the logo on the headstock, you're going to be hard-pressed to figure out which one is which. And I can honestly say there's no, I mean, there's no way around it. Because I've owned a, 40, a real 45, this guitar here is easily 90% of what a real Martin 45 is. Easily, easily 90%. The Martin is going to have that just that 10% more, maybe volume, maybe a darker bottom end, uh, possibly unpleasant bottom end, right? A big boomy bottom. It's going to have that Martin mystique, right? That extra 10% that turns that into in my opinion, one of the masterpieces of guitar building, right? Man, if you don't mind the fact that it doesn't say Martin on here, this guitar, if you like bling and you like big sounding dreadnoughts, this guitar will never ever offend you. It's ha it has 90% easily of its counterpart. Just rings and rings, and it's got a huge bottom end, but not boomy. It's just got a beautiful, tight bottom end.
just gorgeous. It's a gorgeous sounding guitar. And for 10% of the price of the real guitar, I'll take this every day. Because I don't have to worry. If something does happen to this instrument, and I want to say, by the way, too, I bought this. This wasn't my, this wasn't given to me. I bought this guitar. I've had all kinds of Sigmas, and every single one of them stayed in one piece. They traveled well. They went through all kinds of different changes in humidity and temperature. The same as all my other guitars. They stay together. They stay together. They're tight. They're well built. There's no more work gone into a Martin than this. This may be built in a factory, but so are Martins. Martins are built by groups of men with CNC machines, the best, you know, the best technology to make sure that all of the components of this guitar are just absolutely flawlessly assembled. And this guitar is that way. And uh, if you watch the first video, you see a close up, you see that close up. I wanted to just give everybody the opportunity again to see how deceiving sometimes this is by the way this is not there is another version of this guitar this is the dt41 dreadnought telia 41 there's also uh a dr or sorry 45 45 jesus sorry guys sorry and it, there's also a, a rosewood version the sdr 45 uh special dreadnought rosewood which is all solid rosewood back and sides. And it costs about $400 more or something like that. Also a killer guitar, and I mean killer. They, But this Telia seems to have most of the properties of rosewood. It's dark, it's fat, it has good projection. Um, and it just, yeah, I mean, uh, damn. It, for the money, it's very, very difficult to to not give this thing its props. So there's your Sigma guitars, um, DT45. If you can't afford a Martin D45 and you love this design, you just love the, because uh, I do. I think Martin, when they designed this guitar, they created something that was just supernatural. And to this day, I cherish this look, the way this guitar looks and sounds and, uh, and plays. The neck's like butter, action's like butter. I'm going to be putting a K&K &K in this guitar and playing it on stage. And if people can't see the headstock, a lot of people will look at it and go, geez, he's playing a Martin, playing a D45, till they get a close look at this. Oh, baby, that's not a Martin. doesn't have the, you know, the long CMF on the on the headstock which i miss that's another part of a d45 that i love is that design on the headstock where the martin comes down from the top it's just gorgeous there you go there's a guitar that will save you you know nine thousand bucks if you're in the states if you really want this type of instrument and you and you love the way it looks and want this type of sound this is the guitar for you so don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Just don't be afraid to try new things. If you go to a store and find one of these things, and you'll see, like, play them against a Martin. I used to do it all the time. When I was clinicking for these guys 15 years ago, I used to have Martins around me because I wanted, I wanted to show the people how similar they really were because they were, they're built on Martin specs. And, you know, all through the 70s and early 80s, they were built with Martin's permission. And they still are today now. They, they, when they first came out, they weren't uh, working with Martin for the first few years. But then Martin said, wait a minute, guys, come on. Let's, uh, let's work together. And they did. And they were marketed in the United States under another name entirely, not Sigma at all. It's just a really cool guitar. And I love it. And just damn. <laughs> my friends is your poor Martin poor man's Martin D45 by Sigma the DT45 Telia back and sides sick atop my car to fretboard gold hardware Grover beautiful two-piece neck this is a common in these type of instruments but mahogany light 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 poly finish 
beautiful guitar. Thanks to Sigma. And thank you guys for taking so much interest in my continued <laughs> search and quest to show you all the ways that you can get a wicked, wicked guitar without spending a ton of money. But then again, if you want that Martin 45 voice, I'll never, I'll never knock you for buying it. Because if you get a good one, wow, they're, they're spectacular. But so is this for 10% of the price. Anyhow, we'll see you again soon. Love yous. Keep on picking. Keep on playing. I'm JP Cormier. See you next time on the next Guitar Stuff with John.